And we are back with neurology and sleep medicine specialist, Dr. Carmen Dumeyer, and we're talking about all things sleep. So let's talk about how important a sleep routine is for adults and then for kids. It is important for both. So a sleep routine should include a set bedtime and a rise time, and we should try to stick to it. So it will be very hard for shift workers that may have a different plan schedule every week, but in general, um, if you have regular work hours and you have regular hours, you know, in which to expect be expected to leave the house and return back, your routines should not vary that much day by day. Also, not weekday by weekend. So, okay, so the routine should not be different on the weekends or holidays or... Not much. So if you give yourself an hour longer in bed, that's fine. If you give yourself a nap, but a power nap, something that is 20, 30 minutes, but not longer on a weekend that you normally don't get on a weekday, that is fine too. But we don't want you to stay, you know, two hours on Sunday afternoons and nap and then have trouble, you know, getting to bed, sleep, getting good restorative sleep for the week that starts again next Monday. All right, because then it just starts that whole cycle all over again. That's bad. All right. So at what point should someone be concerned that their sleepless night might be more than just the time change or too much caffeine? If you persistently wake up and feel that you have not been refreshed, restored, or you wake up every night and have a period of one or one and a half hours to be awake in the middle of the night, those are um, interruptions that warrant looking at your heart rate, maybe ordering a sleep study, but certainly look at your habits. Do you drink alcohol before bedtime? Do you drink a lot of caffeine and when? If your caffeine intake stops around lunch or kind of within one or two hours after lunch and you are going to bed at 11, it shouldn't be the caffeine. But if you drink afternoon caffeine and think about it that caffeine is not just in coffee, but in tea and in, in sodas, that may be what you need to cut off in, in order to sleep through the night. Mm -hmm. All right, so COVID impacted the mental health of many of us uh, differently, you know, as the seasons had come and gone. So there was anxiety, there was depression. How can that impact your sleep? And what should you do about that? Anxiety, depression, uh, going to bed with worries and being not able to switch your mind off are the perfect stressors that create insomnia. So it's very hard to be stressed and sleep well. Um, part of what we can do is really to, to learn to delegate our worries. So maybe have a notepad next to, the de to, the, to your bed and just write down what ideas you think you need to implement the next morning at work, things that may have interrupted your routine otherwise. Um, Sometimes you just have to tell yourself that you will not solve that problem tonight and mm. tomorrow is another day. Mm. But for some people, it may mean anti-anxiety medication or counseling. Okay. So, you know, we hear every single time when cold and flu season comes through, um, it's really important for you to eat well and to drink water and to get a good night's sleep. So let's talk about why getting a good night's sleep is always one of the top three things that we should do to fight cold, flu and COVID or whatever else. To get good and deep sleep helps your insulin production, so it helps diabetes, it helps you with your metabolism. So in the fight of obesity, it's helpful to get good quality sleep, deep delta sleep. Um, depression is usually um, improving if patients sleep very well. Um, lowered immunity is a factor of stressors in general. People that wake up a lot, toss and turn, don't get consistent sleep, are more likely to catch infections and not be able to fight them. Is it necessarily a COVID how should I say prevention? No, I wouldn't go that far. But your immunity is worse when you're stressed. And insomnia is usually a manifestation of stress. And so therefore, get a good night's sleep and do whatever you need to do to set yourself up for success. Like what you said, have that routine. And the routine should include perhaps a hot bath before bedtime, a routine that is relaxing before bedtime, prep yourself to get into that zone where you actually like to go to the bedroom, sleep in your bedroom, 
don't you know have two or three hours on your couch in front of your tv and then transfer to the bedroom right there is a programmed fragmentation of your sleep mm -hmm. that doesn't allow you to get as much yeah your sleep you're talking to a lot of us right now with that one with the palm of the sleep on the couch thank you so much for your time and your expertise if you missed any of this you can check wfmynews2.com